2023. If you are still showing up in 2023 with 1999 um, ideas or skill set, you will be absolutely irrelevant in today's world. So if you want to have, if you want to have impact, if you want to be relevant in your world. Um, I Hi everyone, you're welcome to another episode of the Carefully Created Podcast in Busala. It's my birthday, or at least my birth weekend, <laughs> and I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. Thank you for supporting, for liking, for sharing, and for being a part of the family. If you're new here, you're most definitely welcome. Um, please like this, this episode. Please subscribe, please share with your family, your friends and your loved ones and join the family. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, I'm so excited about this particular episode because I just, I would like to share a couple of lessons that I have learned so far in the past 20 years of my life. They say that the secret of great men lies in their stories. So why not share some stories of what I've been learning um, in my journey to greatness? Lesson number one, Follow your maker. My people, the Yoruba people will say, and I will interpret, agbe. a river or a stream that forgets a source will dry up. Um, and I'm sure that you don't want to dry up. I don't want to dry up. And so that's one of the major lessons that I have learned in life. That I don't forget God, my maker. Yes, I know him as my father. I know him as my savior. I know him as my Lord. But I also know him as my maker. And so when things don't look like they should be looking, I go back to my maker. I realize and I have been told in his word that I am his masterpiece. And I know that, for example, there are some masterpiece vehicles, for example, automobiles, that you cannot just take to Shegmundi Mechanic, right? You have to take back to take them back to the manufacturer. And I feel like because I know that I am God's masterpiece, every time things don't work, I don't just randomly just assume what should be going on or what is not going on. I go back to God, my maker, to say, Lord, what's going on with me? What's happening? Um, and there are times when I'm also like, in the in your purpose and plan for my life, I hope I'm in the perfect will of God. I hope I am walking according to your plans and your purpose for my life per time. And I feel like this is one of the things that has helped me because I always remember to go back home to say, Lord, how far? Are we are we on point? Are we on track? Are we doing right? Right? So don't forget your maker. As much as he's God to you, he's daddy to you, he's Jehovah Shebe Shebe and all of those things. Um don't forget that he's also your maker. And so when things don't seem like they are going right and you find yourself in probably portals of anxiety or depression or lack or whatever it is, remember that there is God your maker. And always go back to him because he knows what to do to fix you and make you whole again. So don't forget your maker. Lesson number two, you cannot impact a world you don't understand. And this is so important to me because yes, I want to live a life of impact. And so the main lesson that I have learned about this is the world is evolving this is 2023. If you are still showing up in 2023 with 1999 um, ideas or skill set, you will be absolutely irrelevant in today's world. So if you want to have, if you want to have impact, if you want to be relevant in your world, um, I have learned and I'm learning that I have to understand how things are. There are so many new technologies. There are so many new things coming up. There are so many new ideas that are happening around us in the world now. So many ideologies that are being pushed right into the world and so it's important that if i am going to contribute to it or change it or in one way or the other impact it i have to first and foremost understand it right so i have to learn viable skills i have to understand the technologies of the world i have to even understand the ideologies i have to step out of my comfort zone i have to learn new things right i have to i have to expose my mind and stretch myself because once you understand um, the systems and the structures, strategies for dominion will not be far away from you. Strategies for success will not be far away from you. So learn new things um, and understand the world that you want to impact. Another very vital lesson for me has been number three, 
be consistent i remember when one of my bosses i think that was in 2020 told me that obusola you do such amazing work you do this he was giving he was appraising me one-on-one -on -one. he was just telling me and he said but i need you to be consistent and sometimes we hear these things and it feels like an attack see nobody's coming for your head nobody's trying to attack you it's feedback take it as feedback or that's how i take things right so i i took the words as feedback and i went back to say you know what i will be consistent so that every time someone thinks about certain things if you're thinking about someone who will do excellent work and you can always find them doing excellent work part time you would think about busola every time you are looking for someone who will who will put it go the extra mile who will who will show up and deliver and you want someone who will not disappoint you because amaka <laughs> can disappoint if you want someone who will not disappoint you i want you to think of solar and so the way that would happen is if you can if if i have a proven track record of consistent delivery and it's one of the things that i've learned and i think that's something that is worth sharing for the world to learn as well be consistent always show up always deliver your best putting your best foot forward every time it's not just doing it once and for all it is consistently showing up as your best self so that's one of the lessons that i've learned following very closely to that is lesson number four be thorough and meticulous i can't i can't overemphasize how important this is because i have seen i not even just i have seen i have experienced personally times when I have done certain things that I go back to them and I'm like, Sola, that was not your best work, right? And I'm very sure that somebody here can say the same thing about themselves. Be thorough, give it, give it your best every time. Put your best work. In fact, I learned from one of my bosses, under promise but over deliver. So ensure that you are, in fact, how do I say this? do more than you're paid for do more than you're paid for no matter what happens do more than you're paid to do give your best cross every t dot every i ensure that it is perfect don't cripple yourself with the oh i want it to be perfect so i would not do it you know because sometimes we want things to be perfect that we don't we, we do not try right don't don't get caught in that web but ensure that per time you are doing your best you are thorough you are checking if everything um one of my bosses taught me at the time he was like you know what when you do something leave it in the cooler let it cool and when it cools off go back with a fresh set of eyes to look at it again you realize that you probably have missed something or there's something else that you need to add so be thorough and meticulous and yeah be thorough and meticulous <laughs> very very important okay and another thing that i've learned is be present and enjoy the moment guys we too they fear <laughs> because we want i mean almost every time and for me it, it has always been i am I, I think i'm somewhat ambitious right and i'm a go-getter and i always want the best so i find myself almost saying well, every time i achieve something or i hit a goal or i hit a target i find myself almost saying what next i'm always i'm almost always going for what next what next what next as opposed to enjoying now right so while you are working towards next enjoy now be present you are currently living in answered prayers this season or stage of your life is something that you probably prayed for yesterday so why are you not sitting back to say you know what <sighs> we've gotten here while i'm walking towards what is next i will enjoy this one right um i'm a new wife i find myself looking towards being a new mother but I also have to enjoy the fact that, you know what, I'm a baby girl, I mean, I, I'm a new wife. Let me enjoy this season as well, right? So, yes, I am planning for when my children, I mean, I've been planning down since. since. <laughs> so while I'm planning, I am praying, I am praying for my children. I already have their names. 
um i and my husband are started believing god for their, their future and all of those things we are still enjoying this moment we're enjoying this stage of our lives right so enjoy the present while you're planning for the future so be present closely following this is always be grateful it's good to be grateful a grateful heart leaves itself open for more right um another adage please it's my birthday let me see all the proverbs that i know <laughs> so another, another proverb or adage says that um so it really it, it simply means if you can be grateful for the favor of yesterday you will you are opening the doors to more for tomorrow does that make sense um a wise man once said said that only a great fool is not grateful guys i mean i don't i don't understand the sense of entitlement that will make someone do something for you or go out of their way to make something happen for you or just show up for you in one way or the other no matter how minute you think it is and you cannot say thank you how fat or big is thank you that you cannot say thank you right so it is good it is it's not, even, it's not even just good it is important to be grateful and that's one of the things that is my mantra i don't get in fact sometimes i i say thank you so much that people are like it's okay i've it <laughs> And it's so important because it will open the door to more. It will open the door to more. People will be more inclined to do good for you if they know that you have a heart of gratitude. So it is important to be grateful. Lesson number six, be flexible. Life is more a jungle gym than it is a ladder. So it's okay to jump. You're not starting too late. You're not starting too young. You're not too young to start. You're not too old to start. I mean, look at Abraham. Abraham started his work with God at the age of 75. Some of us would have said, ah, I'm tired, I'm retired. No, it's not too, you're not too old to start. Um, David was 17 when he was already having encounters with God in the wilderness, tending sheep, right? So you're not too young to start. He was anointed at ki as king at the age of 17. You're not too young to start. You're not too old to start, right? So... Be flexible give yourself the opportunity to learn give yourself the opportunity to try new things give yourself the opportunity to jump right give yourself give yourself leeway allow yourself to try new things allow yourself to experience have new experiences beyond what you are used to that ladder of success you are trying to climb uh, maybe you are going to start considering getting a rope right and jump because like i said the world keeps evolving and so if you are sticking to one climbing wrong by wrong you may not attain the heights that you intend to attain but if you fly right why not so like i'm saying just remember to be flexible what i'm trying to say is remember to be flexible for me that's one of the things that i am learning be flexible i studied law but i'm practicing in tech now I've, i'm learning i'm 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 pivoting to put tech and law together there's so much you can achieve if you remember that life is not one-way traffic it's more of a jungle gym than a ladder and you're willing to jump the next lesson would be it's okay to fail and that's very weird <laughs> that's very weird to see but really it is that sometimes that we're so scared of failing that we don't even try sometimes fear cripples us from even taking a stab at it right it's okay to fail don't be too afraid to fail don't be too afraid to fail that you don't even try so it's okay it's really okay to fail but don't now sit in the mire of failure and say oh they said it's okay to fail every time you think that you fall into the ground because you failed go for it again start again until you achieve success but remember that every time you go for it again ensure that you are improving on the former so while you're going for it you are improving you are improving until you attain the height that you intended to attain and probably even surpass it so although it's okay to fail fail but set your eyes on the goal all right lesson number eight life is a journey of learning there's so much that you would achieve but if you do not learn if you keep if you if you think that you have attained something and you stop learning you will die that's when entropy comes in 
um, and you don't want to be that person who he who who has died but is still living i don't know if that makes sense right so you want to keep improving on yourself you want to become a better version of yourself by time life is a continuous journey of learning keep improving keep learning new things like i said earlier the world is evolving is evolving right and for you to involve yourself in an evolving world you want to be the person who keeps learning right you want to keep improving yourself as well um so life is a continuous journey of learning don't get stuck in the past keep learning keep going forward keep learning new things keep keep and it will be important that as much as you're learning new things you might have to unlearn some things right so be willing to unlearn be willing to learn and relearn right so life is a continuous journey of learning lesson number nine travel expose your mind and it might seem like oh it's easy for you to say mm, i think that i'm a homebody but i'm learning that if i am going to become globally relevant the bible says that we should multiply and replenish the earth if you're good you cannot plan to replenish the earth if you sit down and you're an Ibano local champion or you are a texas local champion right travel explore the world learn new things and it's not even just about traveling out of your country as important very very important please if you can afford it please do but if you can't afford it leave your local governments leave your prefecture leave your division i mean different countries have different ways they divide their work right so leave your states at least travel around learn new things take in new culture expose your mind stretch the capacity of your mind see what other people are doing that's making them so great you want to be globally relevant and competitive then stretch your mind don't sit at home and be local champion stretch your mind and while you're doing that be present take pictures record take take have memories of the life you're living now because by the time you get to the future and you forget and and you look back at it it would be nice to be able to say you know what i i lived through that i experienced that right so be present go on trips travel and be present be present learn new things take in new cultures make new friends live the best life that you can live right so it's something that i'm learning i'm making new friends i'm learning new cultures i'm eating new food I ate squid the other day. I don't know if I'm going to still try it again, but who knows? So learn new things, take in new cultures. Um, you'll be surprised that the world out there beyond your nose rail. So please go for it. Travel, learn new things, and remember to record memories. Number 10, be firm, but be kind and compassionate. This almost is the mantra of my life especially as a leader first daughter life sometimes you want to present yourself or show up in the world as i'm a no nonsense person i don't take trash i don't do, 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 do. i say things the way they are i don't take nonsense and but sometimes we are just using all of those things to cover our bad behavior of being mean of being malicious of being wicked right so as much as you want to be firm, remember to be kind and compassionate. I remember some years ago when something happened in my personal life and I spoke to my mentor about it. And he said to me, because I expected more kindness from you. Like I said, I take feedback. And for me, that was feedback. Because initially, I thought that I had been nice enough in the entire the way the entire situation panned out, right? So to hear him say, I expected more kindness from you, I had to go back to ask myself, what would more kindness look like in this situation, right? So enough is enough of all that would you rather be wise or be kind right and especially for hirers um it's one of the questions that people ask during assessment it is a wise person that knows that it is okay to be kind and compassionate as much as you're being firm right so yes be wise and be kind right um so appraise yourself am i kind um as much as you want to be firm Remember, if you're correcting people, correcting love, you don't have to be mean because you are trying to be candid, right? You can be candid, but it can be said with a heart of kindness. I don't know if that makes sense, but it works for me. Um, I can literally tell you that 
you are dropping the ball i can like in my i can't say it that you're dropping the ball if you are but it depends on the way you say it. you can literally say to someone oh you are useless you are doing this you are doing that get out of my side you this nonsense person this is and you say all of those things and you kill the entire morale of the person the person starts thinking about their destiny but there's a way you can also say to say you know what you didn't do this right why not try it like this right and if you feel like the person keeps dropping the ball then even if you're going to let the person go or if you let the person go whether you are a boss or you are a friend or whatever the case may be you can as well be kind about it right so you're going to tell that brother no that has been asking you to marry him you can as well be kind about it it's not ah brother james you don't brush your teeth you don't you know sometimes you can be very dramatic but remember to be kind and compassionate as much as you're being firm and letting your position known the power of no lesson number 11 i feel like this is a very very important one because sometimes we're so afraid to either hear no or say no we're so afraid of rejection that we don't we, we're, we're crippled to try no is an answer just the way somebody will tell you yes the person can tell you no so probably you want to apply for a job and you're like oh what if they say what if they don't accept me oh yeah if they don't accept you, you apply for another one they'll accept you there right or um you are bidding for a grant or you are bidding for something whatever it is right no is an answer people can say no to you and don't be so afraid to hear no that you don't even go for the things that you actually desire um or you want to ask that sister out and then you're like 